Hello, hello everybody. Welcome back to my channel. It's Jesse Lee. And if you're just tuning in, I am chronicling my journey of my diagnosis of stage four metastatic colon cancer. And I am telling you all the details so that you or any of your loved ones who might be going through something like this can learn from it, can grow from it, can maybe not freak out as much as you might from your cancer journey if you happen to be on one. And maybe provide you some information, some insights, some tools, some tips, some tricks, and ultimately just take you on a super transparent journey of everything I've been through because you start to realize that it's kind of a legacy play that you're on and you take into completely different consideration when you get a diagnosis diagnosis and a prognosis as well which are two totally different things life you realize that each day is super precious and you realize that time really can stop like that you never know so with that said Welcome to episode two, I guess. I'm excited to be here on the channel with you. And there were a couple things that I haven't shared with you in my first episode that I want to kind of beep, 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 back it up and make sure you subscribe and follow along because these are just a few things I think are very important. So the first thing is I don't think I really took you through the MRI experience. And for some of you, this might be something that is extremely scary. This might be something where you feel like you're claustrophobic or what's it gonna be like. And I wanna talk about my experience at Pernuvo. This is not sponsored. I don't have an affiliate link for you or anything like that, but it was a really great experience. I walked in, the facilities were clean, they were new, they were updated. I walked in and there was a really nice private waiting area. The locker rooms were these full locker rooms like I was at a really fancy gym, a snack room, which I didn't eat any of, um, any of it because it was all like really yummy snacks, like fruit snacks and candies and pretzels and stuff. Um, and the staff was amazing. So I went to the location in Dallas, Texas. It was a good experience. I'd say it was about 45 minutes to an hour. I was just laying there and you don't fall asleep because it tells you, they tell you to hold your breath and then breathe and hold your breath and then breathe and then hold your breath and then breathe. But it was painless. It was super easy. I was in and out in an hour, hour 15 minutes and overall great uh, great experience, I guess, for an MRI. And it wasn't scary, I just wanna reiterate that because I think for some people they worry about these kinds of things and I wanna be your, your friend and let you know, all right? Um, the second thing I didn't talk about was the colonoscopy. Another not really scary thing. So I talked about the colonoscopy, but um, I wanna talk about the prep a little bit. So I was already intermittent fasting the day before. So I tend to do an 18-6 fast. I've been fasting, intermittent fasting for 13 years. Uh, because of Tim Ferriss. Shout out to Tim Ferriss. And I got the phone call probably around 11 a.m. from Dr. Ken Brown asking, hey, are you fasted? And I said, yeah. He said, don't eat. Do your, do, do your colonoscopy prep. So I would have broken my fast around one o'clock. So since I hadn't eaten, it was no problem. Um, and the reason you want to have a, a fasted state, it's a lot easier than taking colonoscopy prep with a colon full of heavy foods, of, of big starches, of meat, God forbid. Um, Cause if you're not fully digested and you take the colonoscopy prep, you are basically pooping out, I, I don't know, gigant, I mean, it would be painful, <laughs> okay? So I was already fasted, I was just on liquids throughout the day. And then in the evening, I started drinking the colonoscopy prep. I wanna say around 8 p.m. Was drinking it, drinking and drinking and drinking it. I think you, it, it was little pills. Um, I'll show you the brand. Here's the brand. And then I was taking, I think, one of those pills every half hour. So it was kind of annoying because I was having to wake up to alarms, take a set of pills, then take a second set of pills. And I kind of was chronicling this actually on a TikTok. And then I didn't finish chronicling it and definitely pooped my brains out around two in the morning. And I pooped my brains out for about an hour and it was just peeing out of your butt. Um, but I will tell you, you know, I'm kind of familiar with like that feeling because I drink pure therapeutic ketones and sometimes I've drank them too fast. <laughs> if you know, you know. Uh, but anyway, so, <laughs> so that was fine. I woke up colonoscopy, got there at six in the morning for a 7 a.m. colonoscopy and, um, Again, bedside manner was great. Had a great conversation on entrepreneurship with the doctor, Dr. Brown. And he said, hey, let's just get you out of here. He was so nice. He said, actually, I won't forget. He goes, I'm with your brother. I think it's an infection. It was an infection. Anyway, um, but he was great. We were kind of goofing around, just chit-chatting. And then you're asleep, guys. So for those of you that are really worried about, oh my gosh, there's something in my butt. I don't put anything up my butt. You should try it. Uh, <laughs> channel though so um but for those of you that are scared of that kind of stuff you are bad. you're knocked out okay uh and so i woke up felt like obviously i took a little nap 
I wake up, bada bing, bada boom, really easy, nothing slimy, nothing weird, nothing gross, nothing coming out after or before, none of that stuff. Uh, and so just so you guys know, I did hear from Grey's Anatomy that they're not supposed to release you until you fart, I think they said on Grey's Anatomy. Yeah, that's not true. So if somebody told me that, I said, I guess I'll let you know. So that's not true. So I want to tell you about that. And then I want to tell you about the CT scan with contrast. So no one tells you about this, but when they give you the contrast, which you saw me in the last video drinking the stuff, uh, they also give you an IV that the radiation goes in. So the radiation, you don't, it doesn't hurt or anything going in. However, you get a warm flush. And I just want to tell you what that experience is like. CT scan takes two minutes, by the way. So <laughs> it feels like you're peeing yourself. So everything just flushes warm. Everything is warm. You're like totally overwhelmed with this warm sensation. So just wanted to kind of walk you guys through those because I didn't really, I don't think I, think I talked about it. So, um, so by the way, right after the colonoscopy and the diagnosis, that's the first time that I went on TikTok. So now I'm going to kind of jump back in. So that was the first time I looked up colon cancer on TikTok. I know that might sound strange, but I was looking for people who maybe had a similar journey to me and then kind of realized very quickly, Ugh, it can get really negative and really sad really fast. And so I didn't want to do that. I, I did also notice that there's a lot of people with colon cancer that are super young. And then I got kind of frustrated because to get a colonoscopy, unless you have something going on that's dramatic, like you're bleeding out of your butt or something else really crazy, maybe dramatic family history or you can't pass stool or something like this, 45 years old is when you can get your first colonoscopy without anything uh, pre, you know, predetermined or predisposed or pre-whatever. And so I think that's really strange because on TikTok, when I first went on there, in February, I noticed there's a lot of young people, people younger than me, like very young. I mean, and it's and then I went on Google, which I'm not saying you should Google a bunch of stuff, but I went on Google and it's the fastest growing cancer by far. So hello, these need to be moved up. If you want a colonoscopy at 10, you should be able to get a colonoscopy at 10. I don't know, it'd be weird. But if that's what you want, I feel like advocate for yourself because good Lord. Uh, but that's also where I got to kind of started look, seeing some stuff. And I'm going to do probably my next video going through all of the different treatments and all of the different remedies and all the different stuff that I've done, that I am doing, that I've tried, all this stuff. Uh, but I want to actually thank the TikTok community for this because TikTok... I, I, when I made an announcement about it, it was overwhelming with not only support, thank you so much, there's hate messages, but thank you so much in general. And then a lot of really good suggestions, a lot of people about, you know, black seed oil, or a lot of people about castor oil, or a lot of people talking about the Joe Tippins protocol, call, which, I'll, which I'll explain to you guys, or a lot of people talking about, you know, turmeric and curcumin, and a lot of people talking about crispy cancer, and a lot of people talking about a lot of stuff. And I didn't know about all that stuff because nobody in my family has colon cancer. There's no history of this. N none of this is anything I had ever looked up before. I've never had digestive issues. And so why would I know? So I actually want to help thank you guys. It has gotten really overwhelming in some aspects, but I'll, I, I would rather have an onslaught of information than be sitting there feeling alone or feeling like nothing is going, nothing's in my control. And so I want to thank, thank you for that. So, so that was, that was uh, back in February. So when pathology came back, got all the stories, oh my gosh, the things I have to tell you, this is crazy. This is going to sound crazy, but none of this is untrue. So the people that flew down for my surgery, by the way, amazing. I'm going to get some shout outs. Uh, Don Allen came from Florida. Uh, Louisa Wixom came from, uh, sorry, Louisa Nunez. My bad, she got married like 15 years ago. But that's a childhood best friend. Uh, Louisa Nunez came from Tennessee. Uh, Mateo Taglia came from Barcelona. And Sasha Franz came from, he was actually in the, in the Canary Islands at the time and he cut his vacation short, but he came from Switzerland. I also flew my father in. And I just want to say to all the people who flew in from places, Unbelievable. Thank you for the support. It was amazing. It is amazing. I love all of you very much. So Sasha Mateo actually stayed here in my house right here in this this room for an entire month, which is unbelievable friendship level on 500, 5,000, 5 million, whatever. Uh, but they also went with me to all of my appointments. So they went to each of the appointments that I was referencing in regards to the CT scan Mateo was there or uh, when I went to sur surgery, of course, or when I went to an oncologist, etc. They went to all these appointments with me too. And 
So when we first went to Texas Oncology, I met with Dr. Stone. Nothing bad to say about Dr. Stone. Please listen to this. I prepped with the Chris Beat Cancer questions. So he has a list of questions that you should ask your oncologist. And it's things that, I'll just pull this up so you can look at all of them while I'm talking about them, okay? These questions you should be able to ask your oncologist. And if your oncologist makes you feel weird for asking them, I think it's weird of them. So I ask questions like, if I do this chemotherapy, you know, um, well, I'll back it up. Hold on. So, oh, okay, I'll just say it. So I ask questions like, if I do this chemotherapy, then, uh, you know, does it matter what I eat? Just to see what they say. If they say, oh yeah, eat your ice cream, eat your pizza, eat whatever. Okay. Asking questions like, do you make money off of this? Asking questions like, if I decline chemotherapy and radiation and standard of care, will you still give me medical care if I need it? Will you still do follow-up scans for me? Will you still be my practicing oncologist? A lot of really good questions. I really recommend this. You are the patient. I said this in my first video. You need to take your time and find doctors that you trust. And I'm going to get into something very crazy in just a minute here. So this is weird. So I have surgery. Pathology takes about three weeks to come back, which is standard. The night before my meeting with Dr. Stone, my oncologist, not my phone rings, not the shepherd's phone rings, not Aviram's phone, my boyfriend's phone rings. My third emergency contact gets a phone call. That is Carissa. That is my personal assistant. She is amazing. She gets a phone call in the middle of the night from the surgeon. The surgeon says, I don't think she's taking this seriously. You need to make sure she knows how serious this is because if she does not take, take, if she does not do what we are saying to do and do it aggressively, she will not see Christmas. She will be dead by Christmas. So the next day I get a text from my, at the time, she's gone, executive assistant and my personal assistant. And it says, we need to meet with Mark at 11 a.m. And I'm like, Mark, I'm thinking someone's, Quitting, I'm thinking someone's fighting me. I'm thinking there's something dramatic because Mark is my lawyer I have on retainer. So I go, I'm kind of panicking. I texted Mark and I said, am I walking into an ambush? He didn't respond. I walk into the room. Two assistants are sitting there. Mark's sitting here. I walk in, I'm like, what's up guys? Hey, I sit down. That's when Carissa says that to me. So in the same time, Mark goes, so we're done with anything that causes Jesse Lee stress. We're done with her having to do all this work. We're done with her having to be the one who carries all the load. And I'm saying this to any cancer patients, stop living the same life that you've been living and expecting different results. I talk about it all the time in business. Stop doing the same things that you're doing and expecting different results. No different in your health journey. You have to change your whole life. In that moment, I said, no stressors, none of this stuff. And have there been stressors? God, yes. Okay, but the things I can control, like sitting here, literally working for 18, 16, 14, 12, 10, 8, 6, even hour days, I don't do that. Constantly feeling like I have to post or I have to be on live or I have to do stuff, doesn't happen. If I feel like chilling the whole day and then showing up and doing a YouTube video after I do my hair, that's when I'm going to do it. And it was in that moment where he just said, you guys need to be all Jesse Lee. You need to help her. You, she needs your help. And it was kind of in that moment where, well, then I cried in Mark's arms, which I have been the tough biatch. He has been my lawyer for six years. We have won a lot of cases together. He is aggressive. He only really sees Boss Lee. And in that moment, he got Jesse Lee. I'm crying in his arms because that's the first I've heard. I'm, you know, I was told my prognosis is dead by Christmas. So the next day, I go to this appointment with Dr. Stone. And like I said, I was prepped. And this is crazy. I walk in. I'm on the little table thing, you know, when you go to the doctor. Dr. Stone's sitting right here. Mateo and Sasha are sitting right here. Everything's normal. He's talking about everything. He says, ooh, pathology's back. 26 of 30 lymph nodes have cancer in them. Uh, I don't know if it's gone anywhere else yet, but we're going to find out when we order you a PET scan. Oh, actually, I said I wanted a PET scan. There was no PET scan ordered. Uh, we'll find out if it's anywhere else right now. We know it might be, it's, it's at least metastasized somewhere in here. So we're looking at at least stage three. I said, okay. He said, here's what we need to do. He said, standard of care is 12 rounds of chemo. This is six months uh, of a full Fox, uh, protocol. I said, okay. And what does that mean? He's talking me through all this. I talked about side effects. I talked about whatever. And then 
he could, t I mean, it was very obvious I wasn't really convinced. It was obvious, I think, to everyone in the room, hey, I'm going to be one of these people who wants to weigh my options. I've got these questions with me, etc. And then my phone rings and it's my surgeon. And I pick up and I, I don't put phones near my head. I don't know. I'm kind of like one of those weird, like, you know, EMF people. And so I put it on speakerphone. I said, hello. I said, oh, it's, it's a surgeon. Can I pick up? He said, yeah, of course. I said, hello. Or I said, sorry, it's a medical call. Can I pick up? He said, yeah. Said, hello. He says, hey, I just want to call, see how you're doing. And I said, no, I'm doing great. Remember, I'm three weeks post-op. He said, you feel good? I was like, yeah, I'm good. I'm up and around. I'm feeling good. You know, moving, doing, doing, doing things, you know, whatever. And then like clockwork and I'm not saying I mean maybe it's a coincidence that he called in the middle of my appointment Dr. Stone who nothing against him goes hey Dr. Mac is that you I recognize that voice he goes yeah man what's up and he said oh we're just talking with Jesse Lee about her chemotherapy options and I look over at Sasha Mateo like have you ever felt like sometimes it's almost like your soul detaches from your body and you're up here in the sky looking down on everything. And you're, you say to yourself, Jesse Lee, or whatever your name is, Jesse Lee, look at the big picture. You're getting sold. There was a phone call the night before, the perfect setup inside of the doctor's room. As soon as he walked out and he handed me some paperwork for it or whatever, I look at the two of them, Sasha Matei, and we're all at the same time like, and I'm not, I mean, whatever, you believe what you want to believe. This is not an anti-chemo, anti-whatever. No, okay. I hang up the phone. He comes back in and he goes, you're also a really good candidate for a custom vaccine. I said, yeah. He goes, we'll have to look at the gene mutations and everything like that. But I think a, a custom vaccine could work really, really well for you. I said, why don't we do a custom vaccine? And he said, well, we will after you do chemo. I said, but why would we wait until after my immune system is completely ravaged, all my good cells are dead and my bad cells before we do a custom vaccine? He goes, I don't know. That's just how it works. So we walked out and that was March 17th. <sighs> and the next appointment was March 21st with Dr. Smithson at the Costanzas Institute. This is integrative oncology and it was a two hour super thorough appointment, did some blood work uh, and just had a conversation about everything. This is where I learned for the first time about ozone, about, it's not really true, I'll talk about that in a minute, but more about ozone, about vitamin C, about curcumin and turmeric, about frankincense, about colloidal silver, about, a, I mean, just a lot. And we still didn't know where I was staged because my PET scan was not until, da 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 da, y'all know I got the, I got the receipts, I got the receipts, okay? My PET scan was not until the 24th. So on the 21st, we still didn't have any kind of staging or anything like this. And I thought it was super professional. I really liked my experience there. Unfortunately, two weeks after my experience at the Stances Institute, uh, my doctor quit or retired. So or the doctor I was going to use retired. So I was no longer able to use him. In the meantime, I also met with Dr. Chase Faldmo. I learned a lot about some energetic stuff that's going on. We did some cleansing, some clearing, some frequencies and things like this. You could check him out. He's amazing as well. And I just felt energetically good. You know, I started surrounding myself with people who told me that chemotherapy is not the only route this could go. And for people that are going through something like this, even that little bit of encouragement can be what you need to keep you on the path where you're reminding yourself constantly, you got this, you got this, you got, I don't even know what it means, you got this. I don't know, but sometimes it's just good to hear it. So that's what that was. So that was the 21st. I loved my experience at the Costanzas Institute. I do recommend it. I did not work with them though, because like I said, the doctor that I was working with decided to, to retire. Okay. So on the 22nd, so the day after is when I had my first inpatient call with MD Anderson. And let me tell you how flippin' happy I was. You guys had messaged me everywhere. I had messages on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, messages on my podcast, emails from people saying, go to MD Anderson, go to MD Anderson, MD Anderson's the best, Sloan Kettering, MD Anderson, Sloan Kettering, MD, like everything. So I applied at every hospital. I felt like I was trying to get into college again, okay? Applying to all these hospitals and I am not getting accepted, right? So MD Anderson, same thing. It was, they, you have to know someone to get in. Luckily I was able to find someone who did know somebody who could get me in. And I had this conversation and, uh, you know, it was, 
I was excited. I was really excited. I felt like I'm gonna go there, it's gonna be cutting edge. In the meantime, I was doing genetic testing to see what gene mutations I had. In the meantime, I was doing all of the alternative medicine that I had found on my own. In the meantime, I was having phone calls with people who were talking about natural killer cells. I was taking phone calls with everybody. It was like all day from the time I woke up until the time I went to bed, we were, we were you know, fielding phone calls. I learned a new morning routine at this point though, where I said, this is ridiculous, I gotta change this. And I don't get on my phone now for the first two hours of each day. I get up, I do things with my dogs, I get in the sun, get in the, I have to have sunlight, I'm handling my, my beautiful children, I do some stuff I'm gonna talk about in a minute. I set my whole day up before I ever pick up a cell phone. Okay, so things have shifted obviously dramatically, but at this point in time, it's phone call, phone call, phone call, phone call. You know, it seems everyone's got the flipping cure, you know, and you're just trying, you're trying to figure all of this out. And so, I was super excited for that, uh, for, I was super excited to go to MD Anderson. And I don't have the date on here right now for MD Anderson, but I am gonna tell you what happened at MD Anderson, even though I can't find on here when exactly that was, but I'm gonna get that for you guys. So, oh, it's right here, goodness gracious. So my intake call is March 22nd. March 24th is my PET scan. My PET scan comes back. Oh, sorry. My PET scan comes back and is sent to MD Anderson. So I went to Texas Oncology on March 24th and had a PET scan. Then on March 27th, I drove on the 26th of March with my best friend, Courtney Shepard, and my two dogs. We got in the car, we drove to Texas, or we're in Texas. We drove from Dallas area, I live in Frisco, down to Houston, Texas. And uh, I had my first in-person consultation. And last in-person consultation. I remember driving up and I posted the photo of, um, of MD Anderson in my stories. It was late night when we got there. I was so excited. We checked into the hotel for five days. I was so excited. I thought I was gonna be there for five days and we were gonna find cutting edge things to do. We were gonna find different treatments. There was gonna be some kind of test I could get into, some CAR T, maybe to something. And I got there and I don't think I'll ever forget. I mean, I know enough, there's no way. This is, like, this is like a core memory in your life. And I'm feeling so good, mind you. My blood work has come back. My, cir my circulating cells are not that high, um, which can mean something, can mean nothing. So don't get too excited about it is basically what they say about it. Uh, but I feel good. You know, I feel like I've recovered from the surgery well. I can't believe that was so long ago. I can't believe that was March 27th. We get in there, get my, my intro blood work done, walk in, the doctors, okay, the PA comes in, the physician assistant comes in, and she had this kind of attitude, right? Which I was kind of like, okay, this is a hard job. You know, it's a hard job. You're in the colon cancer unit. This is a hard job. She walks out of the room and I look at Courtney who's sitting to my left and I said, this is not the right place for me. I can already tell. I don't, I don't like her. I don't like her energy. I don't like the energy of this room. I don't like the energy of this place. And she goes, me either. Or she disagreed with, she was like, mm -hmm. the doctor walks in and I will not say his name. But I have not had a blackout moment like this since trauma of nine-year-old Jesse Lee because your brain protects you for moments that are super, super traumatic. So I'm gonna tell you everything I remember and maybe Courtney can come in on a video someday and fill you guys in on what she remembers. But I remember sitting there, again, up on one of those little chair bed things, you know. He comes in, he won't even look me in the eye. He's talking to me like this. So he's talking to me like this and he's like, yeah, this is not good. You know, this is not good. You know how serious it is? This is not good. He goes, uh, so you have, uh, you have about six months to live, eight months to live. Uh, you know, if you do, uh, he's like, if you do, um, um, oh no, sorry, not looking down like this. Six months to live, eight months to live. If you do uh, full Fox and Avastin, really intense, no quality of life, uh, maybe I can get you to live two and a half years, okay? And I went, and that's when I go, Vroom. that's when I black out. That's when I start hysterically crying. 
Um, I call Aviram for my phone. He was not there. He was in California with his kids. Um, and I completely break down. Like this was the most aggressive crying I had up until that point in time. I've had more since then, much more since then, but I was completely shaken. I was completely wrecked. I felt, you don't, I don't know how you prepare yourself for a moment like that. I don't think you can. And I know Courtney started asking him questions. I know Amiram started saying stuff. I know I'm sobbing. I remember putting my head up and saying, but I'm not normal. And I said, people like me, like you look like this and you're dead in six months. He goes, yes, dead in six to eight months. Yes. Which, so for those of you who are wondering why we're super excited for November 1st, A, it is my 35th birthday on November 1st. So you guys can wish me a happy birthday on November 1st. But also because he told me I'd be dead in October. Okay. And I accept my diagnosis of colon cancer stage four. He's the one who staged me at stage four that day because he read the PET scan. I do not accept a prognosis of death. Okay. There is no, do I look like I am dying? Okay. Well, actually we're all dying. Okay. From the day you're born, you're leading up to death, whatever. But what? Like this? No, see, just no. I'm like, there's no pain doc. There's no, look, look at me, look at me, look at me. Right. I'm, and I literally, and then, and then I'm on the phone FaceTiming Avi. And he says, so, you know, before you go get the blood work, you're going to need to, you're going to need to, uh, to sign off on the chemotherapy. Okay. And I went, I have to sign off on chemotherapy before I get blood work here. No. And Aviram yells, she is not making any decisions today. And Courtney goes, we are getting out of here. And we just went out. We got the, I'm, I'm blind. And then shout out to my friend Loka, who is a joy man. That is his whole brand. I love him so much. He happened to text me a meme. I got to get the meme for you guys. I got to post it. It says something like, and then we'll post it so you can see it. The meme says something like, here's the Dead Sea, the saltiest thing on earth, except for your bitch ass. <laughs> and he said, in case you need to send this to anyone today. And I was like, I could have just given it to that doctor, dang it, okay. Um, but anyway, so that's, that's how that happened. But we, I said, I'm out of here. And I'm sobbing and sobbing and sobbing. We rush back to the hotel. We grab the dogs. We call Mary out. We're checking out of this hotel. We get in the car. We drive, we book it back to Dallas four hours straight. I was going to see my good friend, Johnny Green and his wife, Deborah. We had this whole thing planned. And then no, absolutely not. I'm out of here. I am so out of here. And thank you, by the way, Johnny Green and his wife took the, took my medical stuff Drove it to MD Anderson for me. Amazing shout out. Thank you. Ended up making no dang on difference, but I love you and thank you for doing that. Very much um, appreciated. And so, um, like I said, went there, did the blood work, did my consultation and booked it straight out of there, headed all the way back home. And this was one of my first moments where I had a Nana sighting. And it was one of those moments where I just needed her. My Nana passed away on July 16, 2017. She's the woman that raised me. And I had, I mean, I was crying out to her, crying out to God, crying out like, where, you know, do you not hear me? Do you not hear my prayers? Like, am I alone in this? Like, what is going on? Like, am I making the right decision to leave here? And I leave there and my phone almost instantaneously reroutes me. And it reroutes me on Alameda Street in Houston. My Nana's name is Jessie Netta Alameda Paulson. And all of a sudden I'm rerouted to that street. That was the first time I had like a Nana sign in nearly five years. And I just start losing it again, crying. I show the phone to Courtney and then she's crying and we're all crying all the way home. Um, but again, I accept the diagnosis. I did not accept the prognosis. So next, uh, I, there's follow-ups with other doctors on the 28th and 29th. On the 30th, I went for to Dr. Marshall for a consultation, which was for the Greek test. Uh, the Greek test is pretty cool. This was through the Costanzas Institute. You have to look up integrative oncology for this. I highly recommend this for people with resources. The Greek test, RGCC Greek test. I'll post some of the results of mine. But this was a big decision maker in some of the things that started happening. I already, well, I don't know if I told you. So... 
I made the decision in that moment when I was, my prognosis was given to me that I was going to absolutely heal from this and I was going to do it holistically. And the reason I chose that was because I was told I would not have a quality of life for the two and a half years that he could keep me alive. What is the purpose? I would rather have six months where I can travel, where I can be with my friends, where I can be with my dogs, where I can get my affairs in order, where I can have a life that I like to live, where I can, I can give myself a fighting chance. You are like, I never once became the diagnosis or the prognosis. I did not go, okay, I'm dying. I went, no, I'm living. And too many people, I see it. This is why I can't be on the cancer pages. I can't follow a bunch of people who have cancer. I can't. I only want to talk to survivors and thrivers and people who are healing also naturally and have a positive outlook on this because I can't deal with the, you're dying, you're dying, you're dying. We're all dying. And you might die tomorrow. You might get struck by lightning. Your building might collapse. You might get flooded. You, a tsunami might be hitting you. Who knows? Tornado rolling through. I live in Texas. I don't know. But I was not about to give up like so many people give up. And in that moment, I said, screw this. i got to find a different way. i got to find a different path. If I'm going to die in two and a half years, six months, eight months, whatever, I'm dying on my terms. Period. I'm always going to die on my terms. I'll, I, this, is, this is crazy to me. So people can call me crazy. They can say I'm spreading misinformation. They can say that I'm, what I'm sharing is dangerous because I'm a social media influencer. Y'all tell me how you feel about it in the comments, okay? I'm curious. I'm doing what's best for me. So if you want to do chemo and radiation and do all these things, then by all freaking means. But for me, two and a half years of having, you know, holes burnt in my skin and not being, and, and ha the, what is it, neuropathy or whatever it's called, not being able to feel my feet, it, painful sores in my mouth, infertility destroying me, no sex drive, no energy, turning into a skeleton. No, thank you. I'm not signing up for it. You do you. I'm going to do me. I'm going to stay in my lane, drink my freaking carrot juice and be a happy Jesse Lee. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Bye. So I do this RGCC grief test, they take blood, and basically the way this test works is super cool. They ship overnight your blood to Greece. That's why it's called the Greek test. And it costs about $3,000 for the doctors visit the test, doctors visit the test. And they take your blood and they line it up in all the little Petri dishes or whatever with all the different chemotherapies, all the different immunotherapies and all the different natural stuff too. You get your results back in a couple of weeks. When it comes back, it tells you exactly how much of your cancer that's living in you dies from each of the following treatments. So this doctor who told me I needed to do full Fox and Avastin at MD Anderson, because you got to hit it two ways. Avastin only works, I think it's 30%. I'll pull up my Greek test, double check, which frankincense is just as effective. Like from doTERRA or Young Living, go buy your essential oils, go support at MLM. Thank you. Okay, it's just as effective, at least in, in the cancer that's living in me. Huh. Colloidal silver, killing this mofo. Curcumin and turmeric, killing it. There's so much stuff. There is one of the chemotherapies in all of the chemotherapies. Fulfox is a blend of five, I believe. One is effective against the cancer that has decided to inhabit, it, inhabit me. Yet I'm going to kill off. Like, like, I think so much of beating cancer is you have to understand cancer is an mf -er and you have to be a bigger mf -er. You have to try to outsmart the devil. That's pretty much what's going on. So all the information I could find, am I aware that this is a conversation where I've worked my face off for 12 years? I've been an entrepreneur for 12 years, high-level entrepreneur for about eight and a half years, incredible operator in multiple businesses. I am a business coach that you should hire. Do I understand all these things? Do I understand that it gives me privilege then to be able to pay for these things? Yes, but that is why I'm using this channel to teach you and tell you things that I think are worthwhile. And I would say the RGCC Greek test is one of those before you just jump in and leap in and okay, give me the chemo, give me the chemo, give me the chemo. Just do what's best for you. I'm thankful I did that test because it really, really empowered me in a very big way to take a different route with this. I also then on the 30th had a consultation with Hope for Cancer because I was looking into some of this Gerson therapies. I started reading books about Gerson therapy. Um, you guys should read books on the Gerson therapy and again, crispy cancer and all of that. And then I guess we'll, we'll do this and I'll give you some shout outs because we're nowhere near done. Um, they're not shout outs, they're medical things. So just stay tuned. Um, uh, April 3rd is when I started acupuncture. So uh, I love this, but I really hate how the disgusting little herbal teas taste. But if you've ever had it, you already know. A couple things I do want to give massive shout outs to. And when I say shout outs, I mean like these people immediately jumped in. It wasn't a... It, there was no hollow bottom, if that makes sense. These were people who really are committed to making my life a life. 
and I just want to thank you and tell you how they've helped me. So I'm only giving three shout outs for this uh, because I'll have, I know this video is, I feel like it's getting long. The sun went down. But the first one is my friend, Kurt Linnington. He is the, uh, I believe, CEO and founder and owner of Linear Roofing here in Dallas. Is he a supernova businessman that is unbelievable and has built an incredible life? Yes. He took the time to text me and say, I have this biocharger. He texts me all kinds of stuff, actually. He's like, I'm gonna bring the biocharger over. And I'm gonna show you a video of the biocharger, explaining it really fast so you can see this. This sits in my living room. This is a gift that he's borrowed. He's allowing me to borrow through this journey. And I use it multiple times every single day. And I wanna thank you because I really believe in the energy of all of this. I really believe that this machine is working and I really believe that the energy that is pounding through my body from this uh, is helping heal me. And so I wanna thank you because you did not have to do this for me and you chose to. And it just tells me the kind of man that I knew you were, but it really shows me the kind of man that you are. So thank you, I love our friendship, I love you, I appreciate you. And this is just an example of more and more blessings that are gonna come raining down on you for that. The second person is Dr. Matt Chalmers. He has a practice here in Frisco, Texas. He let me come in immediately and uh, just kind of went over some things with me that he would have suggested. And that was the first time I went and used a hyperbaric chamber. I actually bought a hyperbaric chamber. It is now in my house from him. And he's just been an incredible support system. He helped me get some IVs set up in my house so I could do vitamin C drips on my own. He's helped hook me up with other doctors to be able to get me my pick line. He's helped me get my pick line out. He's helped me do a lot. And I just want to thank you very much. And again, tons of blessings, tons of, tons of abundance to you and your family as well. And the third person, this is unbelievable. And I want you to read this text message that I w I'm going to read the text message actually, because, uh, I just think it's it's amazing the the community of people that I'm able to surround myself with. And oh, turds, it's not on this phone. It's on the phone I'm recording this on. So, all right, so I'm just gonna have the screenshot for you then, but that's okay. I wanna tell you about this situation. So this, this man, Travis Allah, he owns iCryo here in Frisco, Texas. Actually, I'm totally kidding. I haven't, I'm going to read it. And on February 25th, he messaged me because I shared my story. I'm gonna tell you why I share my story to close this video up in a second here. He owns iCryo Frisco, please go. I want you to support this man's business. I want you to support everything he does because A, he is just a really good man. But second of all, I wanna read this to you because this to me is unbelievable. Now, did I already have a membership at iCryo? Yes. Had I already been using his facilities? Yes. But he, I'm just gonna read it. Hey, first text message he's ever sent me. Hey, I want you to know you're in me and my team's prayers. If there's anything we could do to support you, we're here. I have a big passion against all things cancer. We have a few of our ozone therapy guests actually going to remission. Obviously, I'm not saying it's a cure. I'm confident it could be helpful in aiding your body as you fight through this. No sales pitch here. You have impacted me with your content and I want to add value. No cost, completely on me. I want to offer ozone therapy, red light, and my entire wellness clinic in support to you. Un believable. He even offered then to have, uh, to have IVs delivered to my house. He offered anything. I mean, I got to show you, I'm going to, I'm going to post it to me. It's like, I went in then and I, I met him for the first time in person and we had a conversation and he talked about how on stage two years ago, a presentation about culture changed his entire business. And you just never know the impact of what you're doing, I guess is what I would like everybody to kind of think through when you're making decisions in your day-to-day -day life. Be that good person. You have no idea, you have no idea who's watching. And with that said, I think I told you I was gonna tell you something else, but I completely forgot. <laughs> and I feel like this video is going on and on, but you, I'm gonna leave you again with just a happy message. I am so positive. I am so sure that this is gonna have a good outcome. I am feeling vibrant and energized and healthy. I feel like, my life has become better in many ways because of this. I feel like it is a gift that I'm able to share this with all of you. And I want to remind you, you're not alone. I want to remind you that I know it can be noisy. I want to remind you that you have time to make informed decisions. I want to remind you that I'm just a message away. And so whether that's you that is in this journey of healing or whether it is somebody you love, don't give up. There are always good people out there. There's always going to be good resources. And if nothing else, shift your nutrition. If nothing else, just become aware. I know greens taste like garbage, but they are good for you. Okay. And I just, I want everybody to live such a vibrant, healthy, happy life. And 
I have so much more to share. I'm going to take you through the entire journey here, but that's kind of the continuation of where I was from the last video. And I hope that this inspires some of you. I hope some of you uh, are motivated to maybe take a more holistic route. I hope some of you understand you can do the holistic and the traditional at the same time. I hope some of you are seeing kind of the deconstruction of what's kind of going on in the medical world. And then feel free to ask questions below because I'm filming this, yeah, for me, but also for you. And I want this to be something where people are uplifted and inspired and see that cancer can be just a big red alarm in your system that says pay attention something has to change because that's the message that i received from it and that's the message that i know is going to continue to move me forward in my life as we heal from this together so i know we're not done this journey of healing but i do know we're on the right path and i totally forgot to mention at that chiro um at that acupuncture meeting that was when i decided to go vegan in april um, this sweet Chinese lady who reminded me so much of Nana, she she kind of scolded me. <laughs> she kind of got on me about uh, eating meat and she said, no, colon cancer, no, plant-based. I was like, wow, lady, okay, plant-based, plant-based, plant-based. So that's when all of the vegan started, um, minus a couple of weeks, which I'll talk about in a later video. But please listen to your body. Please go get checked. Please make sure you advocate for your health and make sure you subscribe to this channel and you follow along for all updates because this thing's going to be ringing every single week consistently until I'm done telling the journey and then I'm going to take you on the journey as I am healed. So I love you all. I appreciate you all. My name is Jessie Lee. Follow me everywhere. Subscribe, ring that bell, and I'll be back next week.